Now first, there's this true story. It was the Sunday after Christmas at St. Peter and St. Paul's Church in Borden in Kent, England. And Father John was looking at the nativity scene prior to packing it away and noticed that one of the figures was missing, baby Jesus. And so immediately he was concerned. He thought someone had walked into the church and walked off with Jesus. And so as he was heading over to the vicarage in order to call the police or get some help or something, he saw this little boy Henry in the congregation and Henry had his red wagon with him. And in his wagon was this figure of the infant Jesus. And so Father John walked over to Henry and said, well, Henry, where did you get that little infant? And Henry honestly replied, I took him from the church, Father John. And so he asked him, well, why did you take him? And sheepishly, Henry said, well, about a week before Christmas, I prayed to the little Lord Jesus. I told him if he would bring me a red wagon for Christmas, I would give him a ride around the block in it. <laughs> Nothing like those kids, I'll tell you. <laughs> we had a great celebration at 5 o'clock this afternoon with all of our young children telling the story of Jesus' birth and our Christmas pageant. You know, on this holy night, we've just heard the story that Joe read of the birth of Jesus. And it's so familiar to us that it may be hard for us to actually hear it clearly or hear it anew each year. We get inured by the repetition of the story in word or pageant or play, in art or music. So it may be hard for us to realize how valuable a story it really is. There was this collector of rare books who ran into an old friend who told him that while he had been going through his mother's things, she had just died and he was going through her attic, he had come across this old Bible that he had found in a dusty old box. And he said it was printed by somebody named Guten something. And so the shocked collector said, oh, you mean Gutenberg? And he told his friend that, who, who had thrown this Bible away that he may have thrown away one of the first books ever printed that a similar copy had recently sold at auction for a million dollars. And the friend said, oh, I don't think this one was very valuable. It was scribbled all over in the margins by some guy named Martin Luther. <laughs> you know, sometimes we can miss what is valuable that is right in front of us as this simple story with a simple plot and ordinary people that we just heard tonight. This story, this Christmas story, this story of Jesus' birth can tell us so much about powerlessness and love. It speaks to us in an age where vulnerability is equated with cowardice instead of courage. And it speaks to us about a kind of poverty and vulnerability that throws the gates wide open for God's love to be present. Consider the, the characters in this story and their vulnerable circumstances. You know, they're the shepherds who were ordinary workers who happened to live at the bottom of the economic rung in first century Palestine. They had jobs, but they were very poor. And Mary and Joseph were poor too, a couple um, that were entirely vulnerable to the edicts of the state that occupied their homeland vulnerable to the circumstances of a full-term pregnancy and the hardships of a birth, far from the support of a home village in a strange town and in a cold stable of all places. You know, Mary was a willing character because she loved God. She just did the next thing and with God's help and by God's grace, no matter how risky, she just put one foot in front of the other. I think she's a model of faithfulness in the face of vulnerability. From Mary's, how can this be since I have no husband, response to the angel who announced to her her impending pregnancy, to the journey she took with Joseph to Bethlehem, Mary and Joseph showed some great courage that everything would work out all right. 
that Emmanuel, God with us, was really a way to live, that God indeed was with them. Now, to be clear, the one we hail with the lineage of David and the language of King of Kings, Jesus, was not born into a royal household with a trumpeted birth announcement from sentries on a balcony. He was born humbly among animals with a few angels flying around in the nearby skies. There was no human fanfare. Nature announced his birth with a star. The birth of love in vulnerable circumstances was in, as important in their time as it is in our own. 60 Minutes broadcast a story last Sunday night about Christian Picciolini, a reformed neo-Nazi who is currently working around the country training police, FBI, and Homeland Security agents. He tells his own story of being bullied and not fitting in at a tender age when membership in a group was important to him and how he had been brought into the fold of the neo-Nazi movement where he stayed for many years, where he was taught, he said, to hate whole groups of people. These are his words. The truth is I'd never met or had a meaningful dialogue with anybody that I thought I hated. And when those whom I thought I hated took a step to try and reach me, the demonization of them that I had in my head started to crack. Picciolini's life was changed a little at a time because those he hated refused to hate him back. In that same spirit, Picciolini reached out last year to Dylan Roof, who had killed the folks in the church in Charleston. But Roof rebuffed his overture, calling him a coward for leaving his cause. But the truth is, he showed uncommon courage reaching out to someone who would choose to hate him. So you know, tonight is a celebration of the birth of love is a celebration of the courage to love that can be found in the vulnerability of the faithful, who in the face of all challenges choose love when they could choose hate. This is just the beginning of the story of Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus the Messiah. Love is also, love in vulnerable circumstances is also at the end of our story. And we'll get to that part of the story at Easter, so we hope you'll come back. God's never failing love, demonstrated in the birth and then the crucifixion, death, and resurrection of Jesus. You know, when hate seems to prevail, love is always around the edges making a difference. Demonstrated by people like you and me. Love comes quietly a little at a time. Love is born in us. Love is to be practiced and shared. And eventually, love wins. Because of this story, we are free. Free to be vulnerable. Free to be power powerless when we really are. Trusting in a power that is greater than ourselves. We are free to be part of a network of love that refuses to turn, return hate for hate, but chooses no matter how difficult to love, love, and love. So I bid you go forth tonight, inspired in your own valuable, ordinary lives to love. And let your acts of courage be added to those of others as we offer the love of God in Jesus Christ to a world that is very broken. And oh, by the way, watch out for little boys with red wagons. They might just be carrying Jesus away. <laughs> Amen. <laughs>